Hello there, Fur and the Fan friends, and welcome to this week's episode. This is part two of a part two series on our icebox. As you can see from the introduction, I have been very busy. So I haven't gotten a video out for you. Sorry, but I wanted to take the time and do it right. So, as you saw in the video, we played with a little bit of wood cutting. We did some metal snipping. We did a little bit of riveting. We played with insulation. We did some more metal bending. We came up with an idea of how we're gonna go ahead and install our ice box so it's permanent. Today is the day we're gonna do that. We ordered some drains that are gonna be, I say drains because we have one drain in the ice box, one in the sink next to it. Um, Wow, it's a whole big series, so I'm glad you showed up today, and you're going to be glad that you showed up today also. So, let's just jump right in, and we will have fun with part two, building our icebox. Now, our original icebox was very interesting and very strong and lasted for 80 years. However, you can see, I don't know if you can see, yes, you can. You can see the inside's pretty rusted out. It's got holes in it, blah, blah, blah. We don't want to use that again. The other thing about this ice box is it had an outer plywood skin. I think uh, whoever built this trailer, if you look back on some of our other videos, you'll see the rest of this chalkboard or whatever kind of board it was. I think they got that from the shop and they cut it up for their trailer. Not sure about that, but anyway, so it had some plywood as an outer skin, and then they used, put this down here, then they used a couple of pieces of this half inch, um, some type of construction board, I don't know, as insulation, so it gave them a nice one inch thick, whew, don't want to breathe that, Nice one inch thick barrier between the ice and the outside. Now we're gonna follow pretty much that same idea on our ice box. And our ice box is gonna be put together like this. Now off camera, we went ahead and finished our box here. We riveted it up, we added sealant, we went ahead and used some special metal adhesive glue that glued all of our seams together. And this is made of aluminum, so it's a lot lighter than our steel one. And we won't get that steel corrosion. I like this one a lot. Following the same insulation principles as was done before, we are going to use a modern material, modern insulation, this one inch thick styrofoam. We will be adding not only one inch, we are going to add two inches thick of insulation for our ice box. We have the room inside of our little kitchenette area, so let's go ahead and use it for that little extra, extra insulating value. Now we spent extra time this past week sanding up the original pieces and getting all the rust and the little dings and dents out of them. We want this to be a nice, nice installation slash restoration project. And not only did we clean up the frame here, which will go on top, we also went ahead and we bent and cut up this piece here, which will go between the ice box and the side of the camper. We also took this piece which used to be flat, but in order to fit in our camper, remember we were a little bit too big, we had to go ahead and bend this on a 90, which created a very nice back, two inch high splash plate along the back of the wall. That part, you'll understand more once we install it. One more thing we need to do before we can start assembling this, we need to put a drain in the bottom of our brand new ice box so that it doesn't feel full of water and slosh around. Now the one thing I was thinking of last night is where we put the drain is very important because we have some steel framing underneath the floor. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to place our ice box on the floor. 
Ooh, this will be scary because we're going to cut a hole through the bottom of our new ice box, cut a hole through our brand new linoleum and redwood floor, and hopefully we'll miss the frame of the trailer. All right, let's take these pieces off. Let's get to cutting the holes for the drain. Now we're going to drill our hole through the ice box, through the floor. We've gone ahead and we've marked where our framing is, so we should be able to miss it. That's our first little hole. Now we're going to go ahead and we need to take our ice box back out, use this I call it the pine cone widener, but it's actually a nice drill bit that makes holes bigger. And we need to make it the size that'll fit this little drain. It'll go down through our ice box. So let's pull our ice box back out and we'll make this fit back. drilled the hole in our ice box so let's go ahead and drill a hole here in our floor okay we have drilled our drain hole down there had a little bit of a scare I almost thought we was gonna have a fur in the fan moment when I was drilling I saw this at first I thought it was metal. I was going, where is there metal between our floors? But thank goodness it was just our insulating and this is the foil covers. So we avoided that little scary place. Whew. Okay, we have our holes there. We have our hole in the sink. Now we just need to add our insulation to the sides of our brand new ice box. Let's get going. Now it's time to put our styrofoam pieces, our insulating board around the cooler. And to be honest with you, I can't remember how some of the pieces go. Uh, I didn't number them or anything. So these are the pieces and um, I'm gonna use duct tape to hold them all together. So I'll be right back in a minute when I figure out how and where these pieces go. Now that we have our insulation all taped on and our box is nice and snug as a bug in a rug, we are going to be adding our original top frame to our box. How that stays on is there's some screws that I'm going to have to drill and secure on the back and the bottom of this piece which we made here on our bandsaw. So we're going to go ahead and secure this piece to our top and then we'll go ahead and secure this piece to our box and then we'll get to the next step. Oh, we have been busy. So we went ahead and not only did we tape up all of our insulated boards, we went ahead and we added a piece of quarter inch plywood to this side and to this side to mimic the same thing that was there originally. And it kind of holds all the insulation together. Now I will admit we only have one inch of insulation right now on the box, but once we put it into the kitchenette area, we'll go ahead and add more insulation to the outside, the back, and this side. Now, we've gone ahead and we temporarily placed our trim on the top here where our lid is gonna go. We have screwed this part here to the box. 
we have our drain in the bottom of the box. So now would be a really good time to go over there, make sure we still fit. I think we're okay. Let's just double check. All right, here we come with our box. Where's our drain? There's our drain. Slide down right inside of there. It's gonna be a little close. That goes in there. Yeah, wow. Look at that. That's nice. Now, we need to do two more things. One, we're going to add this piece of metal, which is going to be, well, you won't be able to see it, but it's going to be a little trim piece that covers up this edge right here. That will go something like that. Oh. And then the other piece is this piece along here. Let me go get it. All right, so this piece is a special piece because we bent it and we curved and we did all sorts of cool things to make this beautiful edge. Slide it over just a tad. And yeah, with just a little bit of pushing, it'll go in and form a nice, beautiful edge right here and here. So, with everything fitting. Now we just need to go attach this piece to this piece. Then we'll come back, we'll make that piece fit that piece, and then we're gonna be almost done. Now we are really getting close to adding this into our trailer for the last time. It's final time, and we're excited about that. We've added this little trim piece here. We've um, put three screws in the side of it to hold it in place. We'll be using L brackets on the bottom to hold it to the whole box to the floor. We've gone ahead and added this part to the side. So now we're gonna have this little bitty, kind of like a countertop lip all the way around our box. We have our door, which fits nicely. And we are now ready to go and put it in the trailer. I'm so excited. Let's do it. It doesn't fit. Oh, it'll fit. We're going to go ahead and take our back rail off here just so we don't scratch the walls all the way down. So let's go ahead and take this back and I'll remove the rail, then we'll slide it in. All right, let's slide her into place. Let's go to clear the drain. I'm going to get snagged on everything. Just like that, that is a snuggy wuggy. All right, one last test thing we need to do. And that is to make sure that our door Just like that. Yep, that will work. All right, let's put our back brace on it. Looks good. 
good. We're going to put our rib back in. And it looks like we need to trim out just a little bit of our insulation down here, but that's not a big deal. Make sure our door still opens. And that is our ice box. There you have it. That's part two of our ice box rebuild and installation. Now I'm going to have to take a little bit of time and, and do some little trim work around here and blah, 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 and attach it to the bottom. But you don't need to see that. Got to save something for next time. Before we go, I just wanted to say we have had three different people ask for why didn't you just install an electric cooler or a little electric fridge in here and be done with it. That way you wouldn't have to spend hours and hours and hours rebuilding this thing. Well, that's a great question. And I had, honestly, I didn't think about it at first because my whole idea behind building this little camper is to restore it back to how it was in the Pop and Mechanics magazine. And although having an electric refrigerator would have been great, um, honestly, at first I just didn't think about it because I always wanted to do it just like in the magazine. So that's your answer. I didn't think about it. And I really want to build this back to how it was in the magazine. If you'd like what you're seeing, I'd appreciate a couple of thumbs up on it. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. We'd love to have you as a subscriber. See you next time.